Wait, wait, wait. Uh, that work? That working. I think I might get a little closer now. Oop. There we go. <coughs> Alright, that works. Barry Dillon talking to uh, <coughs> Vernon <coughs> Supreme. <laughs> well, wait a little. Are we live? What are we doing? <laughs> are we recording? Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? What's going on here, Barry? What the fuck are you doing to me here, man? <laughs> I, I'm usually counting like you know, like some sort of like, uh, oh, we're gonna go live in a few minutes or something. Oh, uh, okay, okay, wait. Or something, or, I, or I, I no, it's re- okay. I can restart this no, whole thing. No, it's okay. I can totally, start, I can totally right swing with it. No, <laughs> no, it's all right. It's okay. I also like to start the show with a little bit of, uh, like, it's not the show. Right. right. <laughs> this isn't the show at all. We're just no, we're just, hanging out. We're right? just like, yeah, we're just warming up, and uh, and I'm not doing it, uh, one last hit before the show starts. That's that's. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Whichever way you want to swing it, man. Whichever way you want to swing it. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, so okay, we can start the show. All right. Any time. Any time. Okay, it's not a cigarette. Right. Don't worry, kids. I don't smoke cigarettes. Right. Cigarettes cigarette. are bad for Definitely you. Definitely fucking so, weed, okay? Yeah, no, absolutely not. All right, so. Central plank to your campaign is a free pony for every American. Oh, oh, we're just diving right in. You're just going there right just off the bat, aren't right, you? Right from the jugular, man. Right I ain't giving, off you, the bat. I ain't giving you nothing. Well, you, you may live to regret that, friend. <laughs> Friendo. <laughs> well, here's the problem. There are about 330 million people in the U.S. Correct. It's only about 10 million horses. And there's even less ponies than there are horses. That is correct. So my question is, in order to give every American a free pony... Yes, sir. Would you increase the number of ponies, or would you decrease the amount of people? Well, I believe I've addressed this in my uh, inaugural uh, address when I did promise to faithfully execute all Americans. Uh, that is correct. We, we can achieve a human pony parity in our lifetime. Now, once again, of course, uh, we are talking such a, a, a mass execution of Americans. It would create jobs. Okay, there is that. It would be good for the environment. Um... It would be good. So, uh, yeah, there, there, but there are concerns. There are questions. But mainly, let me assure you, they are only questions of ethics and public relations. Well, as long as that's all the questions are asked. Absolutely. Once we get past that, it's all go. Uh, now, once again, of course, many people do ask me, uh, Vermin, where are you going to get these free ponies from? Um, what? Who's going to pay for the free ponies? What's up with the free ponies? How much are these free ponies going to cost? How much are my taxes going to go up for free ponies? And I tell these people, it's uh, Sir Anthony Orman, uh, you may have a fundamental misunderstanding of Ponynomics 101. Now, the important thing to understand about Ponynomics 101 is that once we have universal pony ownership, then we will have equity in the ponies that we own. Now, once we have equity in something, well, naturally, we can borrow against that equity. So we will borrow against that, and uh, we will establish pony-based debt. Now, once we've firmly established pony-based debt, and we all know that debt is a major tool in the economy, uh, it's practically a, uh, an economic uh, indicator in of its own. So we have pony-based debt. Now, once we created that, then we can bring in all the very smart uh, financial people to create all sorts of very exotic and nearly impossible to understand uh, pony-based uh, financial instruments along the lines of uh, pony credit default swaps, uh, pony junk bonds and all of these things. So we are essentially using the, the free pony for every American to create a class of pony based debt that we can there uh, pump off into a very valuable commodity because debt is a commodity because people buy it and sell it, the banks fucking run on it, this country runs on debt. We owe more than we are worth. So obviously debt is a very important thing. And uh, so we're creating a bubble. And of course you need to know a bubble is the, is the most amazing thing in the economy, is it not? It means that the economy is firing on all cylinders. Things are red hot. Everybody's making money. The stock market's going through the roof. And uh, one thing about ponies is they don't pop. That's true. Because this pony bubble steel belted and reinforced. And last forever. Thank you, Uncle Free, free ponies for all Americans. Now, of course, many people also ask me, but Vermin, is it true that we will actually be using ponies for currency? And I say to these people, of course not. That would be ridiculous. Until we can make them very, very small. I do have scientists working on it, by the way. 
they, they sound like they would be the cute, even cuter than normal ponies. No, I can see uh, I can see your next question through there. I can see it in your eyes. I, I, the, the next question, I think, is actually pretty obvious. We're just talking about the, the bubble being held in and unpoppable because it's a pony bubble that is well reinforced. Yes. But are they free? Also, are they actually free? Now, some people can't wrap their head around it, especially many in the libertarian community, no offense, of course, because I'm a libertarian myself, and uh, I'm a better libertarian than you. But uh, be that as it may, um, free ponies, where do they come from? Well, let me tell you a little something about free ponies. When a boy pony meets a girl pony, and they like each other, they might want to get together especially if the female pony is in estrogen. And so the boy pony will meet up with the girl pony, maybe in some corner of the, of the stable, and, and you know, and uh, the girl pony will present her haunches to the male pony, and the, the boy pony will, you know, jump up and wrap his hooves around that the girl pony, and his, like, pony cock will come out, and it's this big-ass red pony cock, and it slipped into the po girl pony vagina, and they go at it, and, like, the, the pony cock, it does the flashy thing, remember C Catherine the Great, how she got killed by the pony. I, I remember her well. Anyway, uh, so in, and then the uh, gallons of pony ejaculate uh, go up into the pony, uh, female pony uterus, and, and they smoke a cigarette and chill out. And 11 months later, a free pony comes forth. This all makes much more sense. Um, Thank you. So you've advocated using social safety nets to catch and contain the poor people. That's uh, that sounds like a direct quote from my uh, uh, book, uh, Blueprint for a New America. Uh, I Pony Blueprint for a New America, and yes, all of your questions are answered right here. If you have any questions, they are right here. Your questions are all answered right here. I'm answering them out of politeness, of course. But once again, of course, this is a book about the future, a future long after a vermin supreme presidency, after free ponies are distributed to everyone, after zombie power fuels the nation, after time travel is used in foreign policy decisions every day, and finally, the secret dental police have set up checkpoints every couple hundred yards to, for your and your children's safety. It is a warning from the future, the people of the future, to you, the people of the past, your present, that Berman Supreme is a madman and must be stopped! So my question was actually what uh, those, yes, of my question was actually what those nets would be made out of. Um, cheese, probably. Probably cheese. Probably cheese. Government cheese. Gov oh, okay, government cheese. It's very strong, very stringy. Right, right, and it traps. It's the very poor sticky, people. very right. sticky, and it totally traps the poor people. All right, and it makes them and right. makes them constipated. Um, you describe yourself as a friendly fascist. I yes. Which fascist? That's before fascism was like cool. Okay. Right. Obviously, when, and when, it's been cool for. Sometime, possibly. Yeah. When I was uh, using the term, it was more to like poke a gentle fun at uh, my authoritarian, uh, uh, tyrannical uh, ambitions, of course. Of course, of, of course. course. Once um, again, before, what, before it became a thing. But what I'd like to know is, uh, which fascist, other than yourself, is your favorite? Well, there are so many to choose from. Um, I don't know. You know, I've already promised to kill baby Hitler. You know, he's, he's not my favorite. Yeah, he's not even the fucking copy. He's dumb. I mean, most, I mean, once again, I mean, you, it's like asking your, your favorite flavor of shit, perhaps, uh, would be the equivalent to that question. Uh, uh, unicorn, I would uh, say. Yeah, unicorn shit, definitely. So, um, there's no real good answer to that question. I, I have a feeling that's a gotcha question. Okay, okay. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to take the bait, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. And then you'll be writing some quote, Vermin Supreme, his favorite fascist is, is a vanilla. I, I prefer vanilla fascism. I, a vanilla, I believe, is better than any fascism. Yeah, I can the, think the, of the that, one we're experiencing, you know, the, the fascism that we're living <laughs> under right now, it's pretty vanilla. Um, you know, I mean, it, it could get enhanced. It could go extreme at any minute. Um, it's it's a pretty frightening moment in history in, in which we're living here in this country, and all bets are off. And stable democracies have totally. <laughs> In many instances in history in the world, empires have collapsed, and uh, by golly, I want to lead this country into the uh, post-apocalypse fucking America. It could be better after that, I believe. Um, you've been described by another author as, quote, a minimally kempt, 
drug warlock. <laughs> Is that fair representation? Well, let me say that I understand that many people ascribe different levels of import or lack of import to what I do. It, it runs the gamut from vermin, what you do is so important to America and the world, to what the fuck are you doing? It is so goddamn stupid. Please, won't you stop? <laughs> um, but, you know, once again, all of these opinions are absolutely valid because everybody's opinion is subjective. It's the way they are experiencing reality, and uh, I'm just blessed to be part of that reality to which they are subjected. <laughs> Overall, I would say that uh, people have, you know, it, there, there has been a certain level of resonance with uh, what I've been doing for the past 30 years. Um, and I'd say overall my favorability scores are pretty high considering. And so, unkempt, uh, some days yes, some days no. But I mean, you know, other days, I'm, uh, some days I'm very kept. Right, right. I, I wear neckties. Kempness is a thing, man. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't mind a good haircut, I don't mind a good trimming. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, the, the part of the image that I project is that, that, that of a, you know, a, a wacky or a crazy person. You know, I mean, sure, that the unkemptness portion uh, plays towards that. And, and ultimately, I suppose uh, people might see me after three or four days at, of uh, demonstrating in the streets. <laughs> and at, at that point, oh yeah, I probably smell. Sorry, that's... The so <laughs> kempness is right out the window. On Kemp, that one, yeah, kempness is relative. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you're catching a rainbow gathering after I've been uh, unkempt in the woods for a couple of weeks, oh yeah. Uh, and so, uh, drugs, yes, yeah, so the drug part, yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. 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 So, drugs, uh, maybe the first time today. The uh, right kind of drug. <laughs> Not bad. Right, not right. Bad, not bad. Good, good, good. good. Uh, many citizens may not currently have the space to house ponies, even if they all are smaller than horses. Well, that's true. Would you support government providing pony housing assistance in order to allow the poorest among us to adequately care for their ponies as well? Well, I could see that's a little bit of a trick question also. <laughs> and, um, let me say this about that. Yes, I mean, there will be some... Minor government uh, mandate, sure, but what good's a government if you can't mandate things? And I Are you wearing that, my shorts? Um, yes, you may oh. salute my pants here. plane, if you will. Once we uh, all get in touch with our inner orb pony power, if you will. Um, so I don't see anything uh, inherently wrong, and there's many time streets to choose from, and I very much look forward to the debates with uh, Mary and Williams, the orb master. Ponies versus all orbs, or ponies with orbs? I would pay good money to see that debate, and I look forward to it happening in this reality right here. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. All right. Thank you for having me. Of course. Once Very again, nice. if you're watching this, you know now that I am best libertarian nominee possible. I Thank think you. we've laid that to rest right here. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>